Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Say Tell 2020. I'm your host, Multar, and I'm still getting the cameras dialed in, so I look a little uh, saturated, if you will. 
Billy's colors are a little bit better than mine, even though he's got some shadows going on. But today's match, Phoenix Task Force taking on Task Force Tridents. Had a little bit of a brain fart. I've been battling with this camera all morning. <laughs> um, hopefully my voice matches up okay. If it doesn't, I didn't have time to test because this camera was kicking my ass. It, I had a scene somewhere in OBS that was taking away the camera, and I needed it in Discord, and it was just taking a massive dump. Uh, so the, you guys say sync is good. Good. Okay, so big match today. I don't know anything about this match. You guys, you know, you can get on the schedule and see who won, but uh, that's up to you. I'd advise you not to. It's on splashonegamingcom slash Saytal if you want to take a look at the schedule. How all the scheduling works is we fly in chronological order. So last week was Harpia taking on ECB56. This week is Phoenix Task Force taking on Task Force Trident. And we just go in order. Yes, these are all replays. They are replays because it allows teams to fly at a much easier schedule. They're able to schedule matches as they see fit because this is not anybody's job. Nobody's getting paid to do this, um, to fly in these matches. So it allows teams some uh, more flexibility, if you will, in order to participate. Uh, so that's why we do re replays instead of doing them live. It also takes away the ability for teams to stream snipe. It also allows you guys to do real-time telemetry via TACView. If you guys have TACView advanced, real-time telemetry. If you guys type exclamation point TACView for a command, TACView or Nightbot will get back to you with all of the relevant information. But Billy, how are you doing this morning? You're brushing your mustache. You're looking fine, as always. How are you doing? Yes, indeed. I'm trying to get a, get a, get a nice, mm -hmm. make sure everything's looking good. Mm -hmm. yeah no i'm doing i'm doing doing real good this morning ready to go ready for some action ready to watch these these two teams uh duke it out and see what we got here mm -hmm. yeah i'm excited navy doc do i have to shave twice a day no uh thursday you didn't see me so that's why you didn't see a beard uh you did not see me on webcam unless you're talking about last thursday which is a possibility Damn. but my facial hair, hair does grow qu quite quickly i mean i've been shaving since fifth grade so it it uh i mean when you get called you know you got a trash dash in fifth grade that's detrimental to your <laughs> to your, your self-consciousness so i had to, i had to shave but after that i went to private school um and you had to shave every day you weren't allowed to have stubble which i loved wearing a uniform i hated shaving so after private school i'm like S -s screw the razors and i just use hair clippers on my face so i just trim it down to like a five o'clock shadow Ladies seem to like it, so it ends up working. Um, but let's jump into the match. So before that, we're going to check out the Supercut. Didn't jump immediately into the match. I know nothing about this. I'm currently looking at Phoenix Task Force, which looks like they have two 18s and two 16s. I have no idea what Task Force Trident is taking. Um, so that's going to be a surprise, but we will see once we get into the match. So enjoy the Supercut, and we'll be back with the replay of Phoenix Task Force taking on Task Force Trident. Here in just a minute.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at Maycomp. This is Maycomp taking on Sanaki between Task Force Trident and Phoenix Task Force. We are currently watching Phoenix Task Force Taxi. Two 18s and two 16s. We can see Fegan right there in front of us. And it just reminded me that I need to fix the logos before we jump into this. Billy, you have any idea of what's going to happen here? These are two relatively newcomers to competitive play in DCS. How do you think this is going to play out? Uh, I think I think we're gonna have ourselves a pretty decent match today. I mean, just looking at that supercut, looked like there was some decent action going on there. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm liking the airframes I'm seeing roll out right now. So mm -hmm. I think I think we might have ourselves a good one here. I know Phoenix Task Force uh, brings it, and so does Task Force Trident. Well, so. we got an F14, and it looks like the F14 may uh, may get into it. Beware the bones, as Navy Doc Ooh. says, and uh, like yeah. It. Beware of the bones. The kitty may may get a little aggressive. So I'm assuming there's going to be a, a cat coming from the Phoenix Task or the Task Force Trident side. I'm not sure if that's the case. I don't. I can't tell yet. We're going to wait till they take off for us to really tell. I can't hit the player indication window because it doesn't really tell me. Oh, there is an F14. There's one F14. And a bunch of 16s. So I think Task Force Trident is three 16s and a 14. And then Phoenix Task Force is two 18s and two 16s. So all NATO for today. Indeed, indeed. You know, and I, I get the feeling until we see uh, some full fidelity Russian aircraft venture into the game that, you know, that a lot of these FC3, especially the Russian stuff, I think end up getting out out outreached in some ways now we've seen some j11s come in and be effective and i think it really takes the right pilot but i i think we're going to struggle to see a, a, a group using that i mean i'm sure there's some out there but i think the overall average is going to mm -hmm. be more towards nato until we get some some more full fidelity uh russian aircraft in, into the game if and when that that happens what do you think phoenix task force needs to do to combat that that tomcat that task force trident's gonna have i mean I we've seen we've yeah. seen time and time again where people don't defend early so obviously they need to do that but how do you take it down early and make it a non-factor i i would try to go into it with the strategy of of running that that tomcat down you know putting yourself into the the just the edge of the wes trying to get him to shoot at you if you can and and, and, and starting that defense nice and early and, and, and putting yourself in a position where you know you're going to defeat that phoenix and mm -hmm. uh, you know you 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 get one or two guys to pull that maneuver a few times you know one or two times each and bleed off those phoenixes as best you can you know that mm -hmm. that would be 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 uh, my goal there but on the f flip side of that I think you know it's uh, important for the tomcat to be very you know selective with its shots right you you really want to put yourself in a high probability situation mm -hmm. as you only have a few of those and uh, I think if you do that in uh, in an effective way you know you can, you can really be the difference maker in a match. Right. And Task Force Trident, I'm assuming that's their official account, has corrected me and says that it's actually two 14s and two 16s. So I see. very rarely do we see two Tomcats, let alone one. So we're seeing it dual kitties coming in here, which is, is going to be pretty. I'm, I'm excited about that. Yep. Um, I think we've only seen dual Tomcats once in one other match this year. Yeah, so one right. Tomcat is hard enough to deal with. Two Tomcats. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if that's going to play any type of... Because if you're having it... Dodging one Phoenix is mind-numbing and difficult, or can be. I mean, some people, it's like, oh, it's not hard. But it's it's detrimental to the psyche, right? It's it's It it hurts a little bit. It's You're taken out of the fight for a while. So I'm curious to see if taken two and had having to defend against two tomcats is more difficult because if they launch on the same target theoretically you're not able to launch both missiles because you can't notch from two different directions at the same time that is correct wonder if that's going to play any any role in today's matchup i don't know but athena sam with notch or die baby that's a few true words have been spoken in dcs my friend notch or die well especially so if it's mk60s if it's <laughs> if it's a mark 47 you should be able to outrun it if you're far enough away by the time it starts but uh 
Mark 60. That ain't gonna happen. Hopefully today, ladies and gentlemen, we've gotten the crashes fixed. I lowered the stream bandwidth, so hopefully... Hopefully that has fixed itself. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to. But it seems to be running better. I lowered, lowered it by 1,000 KB, so... We'll have to see. In-game sound is choppy. Come on. Let's fix it real quick. There you go. Hopefully that fixed it. I'm going to have to figure something out for that, but that's not going to come today. Let's take a look and see what the loadouts are going to be for the aircraft. Billy, one thing I'm noticing from Phoenix Task Force is their 18s are not taking a huge amount of ordnance. They're only taking 6 120s and 2 AIM-9s, which I really like. However, they're only taking a single fuel tank. No triple tanks or dual tanks. It's only the center, the center line. I think I would have liked to see them move the 120s out to the an outer more pylon and then take dual tanks instead of the single because I think the single is uh, more drag inducive than the dual tanks on the wings. I would agree with that. Is that true, chat? I'm, a, I'm by far not an all-knowing being. So is that true? Man, Billy... Billy throwing down the I hammer. Ain't that shit. <laughs> Coming in here is trying to take, I, take steal the shell like that, buddy. I watched I watched the, the chat and I saw saw notice notice be senpai and then I saw blah blah banned by Billy Walmer. <laughs> ain't happening, brother. <laughs> oh, I guess I missed some early messages. Ooh, well played. Out of here. Well played. So if the if the anything ever gets more screwed up with with uh, volume guys let me know and i'll just restart the audio engine and we'll we'll get this get it back in under control let's take a look at phoenix task force we haven't seen what they're doing yet so it looks like they're in like a four ship wedge see if i can grab their lead There's their leads. So they're in a four ship. Indeed, it is two 14s. Rage and Shuey rock in the 14s. And then Rex and Plague Doctor in the 16s. 14s look like if they're taking the same loadout. Two AIM 7s, two AIM 9s, and four Phoenix. I like it. I like that loadout. Even though the AIM 7 sucks complete butt, I think its ability to spoof. Does the AIM-7 off of a Tomcat, does it show up as missile or an M on your RWR, or is it unidentified? I have not consciously noticed to be able to... I don't know that. either. I do know that it's woefully terrible right now. They're I mean, terrible. Now, I've never seen one do anything, anything, in attack view from public server. I don't think they work. Like, I, I really would love to see if somebody can go in a networked environment and show me an example of one actually working. Because we can't, I, I've not seen one, like, actually hit or do or track or do anything recently. So I, I'm curious if, if in, I don't know, I can't speak to single player because I don't do a lot of that. But in the tack views I've watched, they just seem to go stupid, a overwhelming mm -hmm. majority of the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I just don't know how, like, I think you're better off taking tolls right now. <laughs> Frankly, can you take tolls on the out? Oh, put the phoenixes on the outboard the pylons and put the tolls in the adjust your, in the belly. your aerodynamics a little bit there. Nothing too crazy, but I think mm -hmm. you're, you're from what we've seen. Those tolls, I we, we watch 15s empty their almost their entire loadout on tolls when we launch them on servers. I mean, people just don't know and they'll just dump all their misses at. Well, we saw them in say tell last year, and I kind of wonder if it's it's just the worry about not having enough weapons when the time the time comes, right? I, I yeah, just if, if the AIM-7 doesn't work, what's the point of having it on there? I mean, yeah, you can make... I, I think you're better off training someone's missiles than trying to ring their bell with, with something that's not going to end up mm -hmm. doing anything. Yeah, but I don't know. You don't know what missile's being shot at you. That, I mean, let's be honest. Unless you're in a Jeff and you have that pod set up and it's it's catching right, uh, 
I, I, I think you're, you, it, it, it has an effect. It, you, you can't say that 87 doesn't have an effect bringing it in there, whether it works or not. It's going to light up your RWR and make mm -hmm. a lot of stuff go off in your cockpit. Mm -hmm. And that has a value in itself here. So, yep. Yep. Now, does anybody in chat know if the AIM-7 shows as an M or a U in the RWR? Because the Phoenix shows as a U when it goes Pitbull. What does the AIM-7 show as when you get launched on by an AIM-7? Is it an M? Do you even see... No, you wouldn't even see it. You would just see the... You'd get a launch warning from the aircraft, right? Yeah, yeah you would just the get the launch yeah. warning. You just get the flashing port scene. Never mind. The, I'm, the active radar. I must yeah, be yeah, smoking yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> I must be sn smoking something. So it's just the flashing, flashing 14. Uh, currently, these teams are starting to get closer. Looks like we are at a distance of st still 75 miles. So this fuel could come into play in this match, Billy. I want I want to hear your prediction on which side's going to win. Are you going Sinaki or are you going Makeup? That's a tough one. Um, oof. I'm going to go Sanaki here, but nevertheless, I, I don't, I think with how much mountain is in the middle, I don't know how much it's a factor. We do have We're actually seeing right the there. first AIM-54, and they are Mark 47s, and there goes a second one launched from Rage. Those are from s over 60 miles. They are launched from 40,000 feet, so we'll have to see what they do energy-wise. They could catch somebody... With the pants down, um, especially if Phoenix Task Force is going to stay high. So let's grab one and see what they end up doing when the, once they get closer to the target. I don't know if this is the closest one. I'm going to try and actually grab both of them as they ingress. So I think we got one of them that we're riding along with. I'm going to try and get this one. Okay, so we got both of the Phoenixes here as they ingress towards their targets. And the one on the right looks like it's got a bit... Uh, it's 10 miles in, still 1,600 knots and falling from 44,000 feet. Left one doesn't look like it's going to be able to do anything, but this 16 that's ingressing here, three miles now, Phoenix still has 1,300 knots. This 16, definitely 16 is in a bit of a... It, some trouble and I'm actually going to flip to the right one because the left one's not tracking anything and he spoofs it so he's able to get away from that that thing is trash and it's just going straight into the ground does anybody know is there a battery time on the phoenix I think there is does anybody know what it is there if is. there is one there is. there is whether it's modeled in DCS <laughs> it's, it's well yeah there there is <laughs> but no, is there <laughs> is it modeled in dcs 120 being launched from the right group from task force trident from 36 miles guys no i mean it's possible i saw somebody do it on pvp yesterday or the day before yesterday but like you got to be in the right parameters no i i think you're going to struggle to find somebody the, the guy that you're shooting at has to have a lack of brain cells to be able to get hit by a 120b from 35 miles I mean, you really I mean, got to sleep at the wheel there. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to be thinking behind your airplane, let alone <laughs> in the cockpit or in front of it. You got to be so far behind that I don't know. That, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I can see – I've seen Phoenix's work from 60 miles. I mean, if he would have defended a bit later and not had been able to notch that missile, it that could have been potentially very dangerous because it, it still had – 1200 knots by the time it reached its yeah. target i mean it lofted to 60,000 feet and was falling down um it still had a significant amount of energy by the time it reached deathly so phoenix 60 miles definitely plausible if that was an mk60 even better athena jazzy yeah it is a low pk shot but i think you have much more it's a much more effective shot launching a phoenix from 60 miles than it is a 120B from 35 miles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, let's be honest. I mean, the, the, the 120B, especially when you counter it, the fact that it's a B from that distance, and it's like, okay, well, yeah. we're just yeah. shooting to say we shot here now, aren't we? Aren't we? And he, he launched two of them. It wasn't just one. There was two. So uh, Ray, Rex, 
I think is down, not Rex, uh, Rage, I think is down to two Phoenixes. I think that was Rage that we saw launch them. But as, as Jazzy did point out, they did force them defensive, force them defensive and cause Phoenix Task Force to lose virtually all of their altitude. Of their Maybe that's could be. Plan, as I said, could very well be. They're at a disadvantage, but I, I think, you know, uh, you, the, you, you weigh that versus how much those missiles may be valued in the end of the match and how much we see people in positions without mm -hmm. the right ammunition to do the job when it counts. I just, I'm going to always err on the side of proper shot selection when you only mm -hmm. have what you have. Mm -hmm. Here's Wazir. I'm going to call him Waz. Defending an incoming aim 7 or 120. He turns back into it. That thing's trash. It doesn't have the energy. So that's a non-factor. Flies harmlessly over the top of his aircraft. He doesn't have to worry about that. Trying to keep track of the action. Fegan now in the top right of your screen launching a 120 in on the cluster of Task Force Trident. Something I'm noticing, Billy, is Task Force Trident is very, very close together. Where if we look at Phoenix Task Force, look how spread out Phoenix Task Force is. So the mutual support or mutual the supportability coming from Task Force Trident is going to be much greater than what we're seeing from Phoenix Task Force. And now Rex puts, I think that was a 120 out, onto somebody from Phoenix Phoenix Task Force. It's on Fegan. Where is it? Where is it? Fegan's in trouble. There it is coming in from the right. Half mile, 0.3 miles, and he gets taken down. Got a little confused there. Camera works. They were both in 16s. But Fegan just tunnel visioned, I'm assuming, in on to Rex. And Rex put a decently dangerous 120 shot out there and causes Fegan to pay for his thinking inside of his cockpit instead of ahead of his airplane. So that's the first casualty of the day is Phoenix Task Force's Fegan. We're now down to a 4v3, and Rex is continuing to push up the center towards Waz and Diablo for Phoenix Task Force. Rage and Chewy, the F-14s, are, I'm going to assume, trying to isolate somebody. They're kind of doing their own thing, uh, a grinder on this left flank, and then Plague Doctor is off by himself. But now Waze is getting in deep. And I don't know if anybody's going to turn in on him, but Waze is putting the pressure on. He launches a 120 out onto Rex. And that may have potential. I think Rex is actually going to line of sight that. So if we look from Rex's point of view, there's the 120 back over his left shoulder, or his right shoulder, excuse me. Still three miles behind, and that's... That's not going to be an issue. He line sighted it, and then it's just, it's not going to have the energy to reach, come out and reach out and touch him. Now, Plague Doctor is pressing ways. I like the aggressiveness, Billy, coming from Task Force Trident. I really like what they're doing here. Multiple missiles being launched by Task Force Trident. I don't know. I think the first casualty or first person to have any type of anything happen is going to be Diablo. He's able to line of sight that missile, so that becomes a non-issue. And now we've got Plague Doctor. Oh, let's, uh, let's go back to the map here. Man, there's just stuff happening all over the place right now. So missiles flying everywhere. AIM-54 launched by Rage onto Deathly. That 120 actually looked like it was launched on Plague Doctor. But Waz is sandwiched now. So Waz has a combatant Plague Doctor right behind him. But Plague Doctor decides, I'm not going to press this any further and breaks off. I would like to see him continue to press. I don't know why he decided yeah. to break off there. That's a little that's a little strange. I think it's they're in the mountains and yeah. it's hurting their situational awareness. Yep, they're, they're not seeing certain things because of these mountains here and the elevation they play. They, yeah. they, they, there's a lot of high ridges there, and it's just, I think mm -hmm. it's blocking some stuff. I'm going to mm -hmm. assume some data link uh, connections are getting cut off as these guys dive down deep into those mountains. They're losing mm -hmm. stuff on SA, trying to get it back. So I, I think there's a little bit of that going on on both sides here. Mm -hmm. 120 being launched by Rex onto Diablo. You can see Diablo recommitting. He's going to fly right in that missile, and he takes a face smile. And he gets taken out. So Task Force Trident in a very commanding position in this matchup. Just dominating 
Phoenix Task Force. Phoenix Task Force has two pilots left. And they're both isolated in a 2v2. Rage, though, is just... Rage, I don't know where you're going. Maybe Rage doesn't have any missiles. But now Chewie is in a head-on situation against Waz. And there goes a 120 coming in onto Chewie. Can I grab Chewie's perspective? There's Chewie. And Chewie takes a hit. So Waz able to try is in an attempt to equalize the playing field. Takes down Chewie in a really well-fired 120. I think... Why, people may disagree with me, but Waz was in a really good position there. In the, he could get close because he had a bunch of terrain between him and the, his incoming threat. So if he did get launched on, he could very easily line of sight any threat that came in came in on him. Uh, we're now riding along with Deathly. Or, sorry, we're not. You are now riding along with Deathly, who is being chased by two Phoenix Task Force pilots, Plague Doctor and Rex. I think the fi the shooter is going to be Plague Doctor. And Plague Doctor and Deathly are now merged. Now seeing it from Plague Doctor's perspective, he's still merged. Now we're going to grab Rex. Rex is now on the 6 of Deathly. And remember, we still have Waz for Phoenix Task Force. And I, the issue here, Billy, is weapons management. Neither of these guys for Task Force Trident have any weapons left. I guess I guess Plague Doctor does. Plague Doctor does, but Rex doesn't. Rex is in a perfect firing position, but he's getting dragged towards Re Waz. You can see Waz coming in from the left. Hey. You can see Waz coming in from the left, and now if we flip back, and he, Rex gets taken down. Boom. And now Plague Doctor's merged with Waz, gets a missile off onto Waz. Waz is going to eat this 120. He doesn't have any ways too fast to be able to notch it. God damn it. Come on, man. Get the cameras right. <laughs> uh, but I think we didn't miss anything because Waz is still up. Is he still up? No, Waz is dead. Oh, we Waz is dead. Damn it. Come on, man. Get your shit together. It's quite an eventful match there, though. There's just stuff all happening all over the place. So yeah, really two bad. pilots for Task Force Trident remaining and one remaining for Phoenix Task Force. Oh, so we still have one up for them. Okay, I got lost. We do. Waz is still still up. Sorry, it's Deathly. Waz got taken down. But Deathly is still up for Phoenix Task Force. What weapons does he have remaining? He's got two 120s. Two 120s. And Rage actually has a Phoenix left. So Rage... <laughs> has a, a pokey stick that's got some raid range to it. How close these guys are getting? Deathly is now turning cold. And does Rage see him? I don't think Rage sees him. He's scanning. He might have him now. I think his Rio's just told him that the target's off to the right. He's committed onto him. You can see him, him pointing his nose directly at Deathly like to see him pull the nose up and just unload a Phoenix. There goes the 120. Can't tell who that was launched on. I don't see any incoming threats. Oh, there was a missile coming from Deathly 6 o'clock. But Deathly doing a decent job of staying alive here. Indeed, he's he's really kind of working this in. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to assume fuel is gonna be a common issue here as he continues to. Is he in gate? Doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't look like he's in gate. But plague doctor's coming right over this hill and is ingressing encroaching on Deathly. But does he see him? Yeah, they see him. They definitely see him. <laughs> right before there. Oh. So Deathly ends up just flying straight into a, a sandwich, a death sandwich, and Deathly has died. That was well... I thought Task Force Trident was going to be a lot more commanding during that round, but Phoenix Task Force was able to take it back and make a match of it, make a round of it. Absolutely. That was... That was I thought that was going to go more one-sided with how that started. Agreed, agreed. Um, 
I think uh, that was definitely a lot closer than uh, it, it may have appeared there at times. It, it, it kind of swayed back and forth more than I think we're used to seeing a match do. Well, I don't know that it swayed back and forth. It was... We don't usually see teams make a mount... Not mount, a mount. We don't usually see teams mount a comeback like they did there. It was... They were down 4-2, to two, and then it turned into a 2v1. So they did fairly well to be able to, in an attempt to equalize that. But like chat said, I think Deathly just ran out of boomsticks. He yeah. ran out of weapons, except his gun, of course. But his, your gun, when you're fighting other people that have missiles, that's a rough place to be. Yep. That's a very rough place to be. Looks like they're not going to force people to take another round. And unfortunately, guys, I don't have time to do the TAC view debriefing today. I have to do some stuff immediately after the stream, so I don't have time to jump and do that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to send you guys to a vid while I get everything set up for the next round. Um, and then we'll talk while they're they're taxiing over what we, what we think happened. So we're going to do that. Enjoy the video. And I will be right back, or we will be right back, with round two of Task Force Trident taking on Phoenix Task Force, and Task Force Trident is up one to nothing. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just getting the track all set up. I got a little bit of fast forwarding to do because they uh, they sat on the ramp for quite some time. So I don't want you guys to have to sit and watch people on the ramp for like 20 minutes. But as for the landing, you, say tell you are required to land unless the other team tells you that you don't have to. So if th that rule is there where they can tell you you don't have to because sometimes they just want to get the next round going and they don't want to have to wait around for you to land. A lot of times it's we believe you can trust that the other team knows how to land in competitive play. It's more, it more comes down to you want people to have to RTB if you think they're low on fuel and they're not going to make it. I mean, most, most of the time you can expect that the opposition is going to know how to land their aircraft. Usually at this we, level. we see it happen in a match where the, or in a round where the match is on the line. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. if, if a team may lose the match because of that round, Normally, you'll see them try to force them to fly back just as a last-ditch effort. Maybe somebody runs out of fuel. Maybe they didn't mm -hmm. plan as well as they thought. But it's it's not as common as one might think to see somebody not make it back on fuel. We, we, I think we've only actually seen it a handful of times. Yeah, we haven't seen it very often. But it does happen. I mean, we've 
a couple years ago, we saw somebody get lost because weather used to be a thing. And we saw somebody over Kataisi, they could not find the runway. They couldn't find it. And it, it, they were trying to fly around low on fuel for like 15 or 30 minutes, and they could not find the runway. And I think in the end, the round ended up in a draw because of it. And Vlazi, I've seen you land plenty of times. Don't you be spreading that kind of those lies. Is she a liar, Billy? I mean, she's she refuels inverted better than any person I've ever. I mean, she refuels period better than I think ninety nine percent of you people out there flying DCS. But not only does she refuel really well normally, but she flips over and does that shit inverted and does it quite well. But I add for those who haven't seen it, it's worth checking out. Nope, nope, I'm not that dedicated to that crap. <laughs> it's not happening. I like to refuel. It's not man, happening. But shit. Just I'm, I'm sweating just trying to blink enough times and do what I need to do to get the whole thing going in the first place. Nope. Oh. Okay. So I am going to again try. I'm Guys, I'm, I'm trying on the camera. I'm trying. I just want you guys to know that I'm really trying to make sure that you guys don't miss anything. I, I'm, I'm trying. Really am. <laughs> You've improved, it's just, man. I, I mean, I'll, I'll say it for sure. You, it, things have gotten better. You know, obviously, this isn't how we used to kind of do things when it was live. It was a little different as far as how you. I figured as much. Looks like we're back. All right, we're back. Sorry, guys. I don't. I don't know what the deal was there. It. Uh, stream died. When it dies, at least I'm catching it rather quickly. But just refresh, refresh, and you guys are should be good to go. We're back up. We should be back up. And thank you, Navy Doc. That's a wild weasel hat on I got on. Yeah, we're good. We're good. So, I, OBS is just taking massive dumps. I, I don't know why. It, it just crashes. So I'm going to have to try either redoing my scene collection because it was imported from a different machine. I'm just going to have to redesign everything and redo everything. Or uh, maybe it's because I'm capturing two of the same game at the same time. But it just... I feel like we weren't always having these problems. No. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, maybe I just need to try and reinstall OBS. OBS. Yeah, that, that might be it, too. I feel like sometimes the same people who go Discord, the same people who go OBS, seem to always have, like, the most egregious fucking problems and yeah. at the times when you need them to happen the least. Yeah. Some people are saying that TacView's not working. Uh, it may not because I had to replace my router on Wednesday, so ports uh, may not be open. Is it, it is it I'm working for it. you, Billy? Can no, you check it? I, it's, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I tried. Uh, oh, okay. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see if that we can get that working. I'll I'll check a lot of this stuff after day and tomorrow, so we can have it up before. This is my. It's going to be two days off, so I've got some more time to be able to jump in and try and get some more of this stuff fixed. Awesome. But back on the camera stuff, I'm not trying to miss stuff. Like, I see it on my screen. I just forget to push the button to change the camera. Because um, I'm running two cameras at the same time. So I'll see something, and then I'll just forget to hit the button in order to flip over to the other camera. And I'll commentate on it because I can see it, but then you guys can't see it, and I feel like an idiot. Because I am. I mean, there's, there's no sugarcoating that are. i think we all are Maltar. yeah feel alone there and one of these cameras or one of the dcs instances is using the liveries and the other one is not it's just bizarre well round two here who's got the momentum going into this i think i think we can safely hand that to tft right I yeah think, uh, they, definitely they, they, task force trident yeah so uh curious to see how they approach this again uh do, how, do we do we say they, they they handled the 14 pretty darn well in that in that match phoenix phoenix task force did do a good job of denying 14 the 14 any type of effectiveness right really game changing input into the the first yeah, round okay. yeah so yeah i'm curious to see if they they can do that again does TFT come out with a little bit different game plan for those four teams to maybe try to counter the fact that they seem to have a way of, of dealing with them. Uh, Don't you know, launch as far? 
that certainly uh, a big part of it. Closing the gap there on that fourteen and and and, and increasing that probability is as uh, you know you, you got to keep in mind that the the reach there is is pretty pretty distinct advantage over that one twenty. Granted, we see guys trying all these crazy long shots, but they're not they're not as effective. And if you know there's a chance it's coming and you're prepared for it, it's it mm-hmm. really makes it almost irrelevant at that point. Um, but I think uh, you know these fourteen guys may be pushing the numbers a little bit more and, and pushing a little bit further getting right outside the, the, the true wedge of that 120 and waiting to shoot, I think is, is in your best interest, you know, that low 30, 35, 30 to 35 mile range right in there, you know, where the, the 120 could have get a kill on you. Yeah. If you're not paying attention, but really you're in the sweet spot now for the, for the Phoenix at that mm-hmm. point, you know? Yeah. I think we talked about this last week. Guys just need to wait patience and it's okay you don't have to shoot the first pass no you don't you don't don't have it does not it's not a required thing people are going to assume you're going to they're going to behave as if you might you don't have to you're already getting them to do what you would do mm-hmm. by shooting a missile anyway mm-hmm. in those cases so mm-hmm. it's like why waste the effing thing it just mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't make sense absolutely uh quick shout outs to uh to gordo b dropping five more gifted subs Ooh. So he did this a lot earlier. I just missed him. Um, Billy and I were actually talking about him to make sure that I don't miss out on that stuff. But guess what? Newsflash. I missed out on it. Um, so thank you again, Gordo B, for the five gifted subs. Much appreciated. And then he also dropped 100 bits and said, Ground has a PK of one. Will it score again today? <laughs> well, technically it scores every time somebody dies because the plane can only go down. Right? When you don't have engines... There's a pretty high likelihood, and Billy, I'm going to say 100% that the plane is going to fall. Right? Yes. I mean, that's the typically plane, what happens. Going, oh, planes are coming down. Those are facts today. It's happening. Whether or not they're in pieces, whether or not the pilot is dead or alive, other questions. But facts. Planes are going up. Planes are going down today. Well, we let, me, let me put it this way. Everyone is going to land. The question is going to be how hard the landing is. And if your pilot is alive during said landing. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's it's big factors, big factors, things we want to keep an eye on today as we're watching guys. There's a tip for you right there. If you're new, pay attention to who dies and who lands. Cause as John Madden would say, <laughs> the team with the most points wins the game. Exactly. Yes. In this case, the team with the most kills. And with the most guys alive at the end of the day, wins the game. You need that, like, NFL theme music to just cue in on that note. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to have an NFL season. I think it's the ML, MLB is yeah. going to cut their stuff short. I can almost guarantee that. What did the entire Marlins team catch COVID? There's like the one entire team has it now. It's like, oh. I don't know. I, I don't know. I yeah, won't go I, too I, far into this because I don't want to make this political. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. But, you know, as a Bucks fan, of course, the year I get Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski is the year that football does not happen. So, you know, that is my luck as an NFL fan. Well, I, he'll retire next year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, was, it was cool. Like, we all get to wear some jerseys and, and laugh for a little bit. But, you know, screw you, COVID. But, yeah, I guess we can leave that there. I'll complain about real sports later. Looking at the screen, let's jump back and look at Diablo. Diablo for Phoenix Task Force. I don't know if we looked at him last time or not, but he took all the missiles. Six AIM nines and six one twenties. I just I I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that number of missiles. And if we look now at Waz, also for Phoenix Task Force, he did the same thing. So instead of the limited loadout that they took in round one. We got the whole loadout in round two. I mean, they took, like, the whole weapons arsenal out of the weapons bunker. I'm going to stay adamant on... And he's got red smoke. Yeah. Anti-double uh, pylons on, or on, the, on the outer... Anti-double rack on the outer pylons. Uh, I, I just don't like what that does to the aerodynamics. Not sure how that's going to change as ED tweaks that, but at the moment, not a fan. And, and really... This red smoke. Let's let's hope he remembers to turn that off before you get into it. What what's up I, with this red smoke? 
I don't know. I mean, is it intentional? Did he accidentally hit a keybind? I mean, I think you got to purposely load that smoke too, right? I don't know. I've like, never used it. Accidentally load red smoke. I, I'm. Man, Vegan says it makes you more aerodynamic. <laughs> it, well, it makes you more visually dynamic to the other team. That's maybe that. in your maybe in your own mind. <laughs> but if that's what gives you an advantage, all the power to you. I mean, it's, it, it could be the big dick move there. Like, screw you. I'm going to let you see me the whole time. I mean, if this guy comes in and shoots everybody down, who's going to be laughing at the end of this? I think we all agree, though, low probability that will I don't know. I mean, it's like people that write things on their hands or things for superstition. I mean, if that's <laughs> that's what you're doing with the red smoke. I mean, if, if he's trying to call attention to himself, I maybe. I literally took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> it's like, that's a, a viable strategy. Yeah, he's got the camera on him right now, right? Look at me. Separation between the two teams is down to about 80 miles. This is a much more distant mission location than we've seen typically in the past. Slowed Cadams and call Fox shots. I like it, Gordo. I like it. It's effective strategy here. Call sign Disco says Hornet's going to be bingo quick with that loadout. That's true. And I think yeah. that may have been an issue for Phoenix Task Force in last round because they only took single tanks. They're not taking dual tanks, which to me is detrimental to their late game. I mean, they, they can't. I don't I, I You can't be effective because when you merge, you need gate. Otherwise, you're going to be in a world of trouble. And I, I don't understand. The take in the center line over the dual tanks. It just, I don't know. It's weird to me because I think it's it's higher drag. It's a higher drag coefficient. With the tank, the center line tank on the bottom? Yeah, in comparison to the dual uh, tanks. It's, it's phenomenal from, from the dudes who are IRL Hornet guys in, in our group, at least. Uh, that, that amount of drag on that bottom tank is phenomenal. Um, I think when it comes to maneuvering, you with those outer pylons on those wing edges they're it's catching more when you're turning and when you're when you're but is that modeled from what i was told yes i mean who fucking knows with these people these days that's true aim 54 <laughs> is in the air at fifty-seven thousand feet 2300 knots and i can't tell who it's going on so we are going to flip this there's actually two phoenixes I don't know if we're on the near one or not, but we're going to go to dual screen so you guys can see what's going on. So we're riding along with the Phoenix on the left, and I think this is the, the front one. Yeah, so we're riding along with the front one, and this has got a chance. Deathly is at 12,000 feet descending. Waz is already really low, but they're not doing anything except being low. And this Phoenix, the lead one, coming in on Deathly, it's still at 1,400 knots. I think Deathly's dead. Ooh, I mean... Oh, actually, it's going after Waz. So the first one that was oh, launched is going after dude. Waz. That's great. And it's going to hit him. This thing's yeah, going to hit him. Game over, bro. Boom! And I think the That's second one, job. that was a... Good I mean, work, granted, it was... Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> granted, it was... Uh, I don't know what maybe they got low and they thought they weren't they were in an RWR dead zone because it was over their lift vector. That has to be what ha I don't know what happened there. He flew straight into that. But that missile came down from fucking orbit. The, the, the AIM-54 Phoenix does not give a fuck how low you are. No. <laughs> absolutely not. not. <laughs> well, none of the missiles well, okay, the ER gives a crap about how low you are because if yeah, you're below fair like 30 meters it just stops tracking but from what i understand in reading stuff about the pilots in real life that uh that's real like that actually happens yeah. so ground clutter. yeah yeah, yeah. There, the right? phoenix how it is in game it don't care at all and i i hazard to guess i'm guessing here that the missile was so far above them after they descended it was over their lift vector and it was outside of their rwr's yep. visual range so it wasn't getting the, the radar warning. And if we look back at the map, we've actually got another Phoenix being launched by Rage. Let's see if we can grab it. So here's the Phoenix launched by Rage. 
One thing I will say is I really like that we're not having to deal with missiles in the ground anymore. Like, we're not having to fight and go through and find miss like flying missiles. Agreed. In F2 through missiles that are in the ground. <laughs> uh, but Diablo isn't defending yet, and that Phoenix... Uh-oh. It's five miles out. So there it is. You can see it on Diablo's screen up to his left. And the Phoenix is still at 1,000 knots. And it's is it going to make it over this hill? It's going to make Ooh. it over this hill. He's not going to notch Ooh. it. And he gets popped. Bending. Bending. So that Phoenix was bent like Beckham and just <laughs> goes right over the hill and smashes another Phoenix Task Force compadre in the face. Wow. So we didn't see much coming from the Tomcat in round one, but in round two, they came out to play. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And it's Gordo says there. Phoenix greater than Hornet. Uh, when you don't defend, yes, that's typically what happens. And when you don't defend in an aircraft and you get hit by something that's high explosive, you're going to have a bad day. And bullet confirmed. I saw two squirrels get killed so far this match. If you go back and clip it out, you might see it on that Phoenix kill. Another, another Phoenix. And th these Phoenixes, these last two, Timber. have been phenomenal. They've been really good shots. So here comes another one, launched again by Rage. And that's coming in on Deathly. Can we see it? Ooh, that's going to get line of sighted. Yep. Yeah. So that got line of sighted. This is Deathly's view, and it hit that mountain right behind him. So that had some juice. But unfortunately, he was able to line of sight it just barely. I mean, just barely was that missile line of sight it. That was, he's lucky that mountain was there, in all honesty. That was 100 yards wide. And if he wouldn't, if Rage had launched a little bit later or a little bit earlier, definitely very well could be dead. Indeed. Giving you guys an overview of the map, we've got Plague Doctor and Rex encroaching on Fegan. And Fegan, let's grab Plague Doctor here. So launches a 120. I don't see Plague Doctor yet. Or, sorry, Fegan. Yet. But Plague Doctor is hot on him. So there he is right there in the F5 view. And Fegan doesn't see him. Fegan's got a 120 coming in from his right by Rex, but that gets line of sighted. I'm going to go to a sp so you guys can see the overall map view of this fight. Now Plague Doctor puts a 120 out onto Fegan. And Fegan's not defending. Fegan, what are you doing? You need to defend this. Did he line his side? Oh, it came over the hill and hit him. But it doesn't look like it did anything. That was one of those times where the 120 ends up hitting. But doesn't cause any damage. Which happens in DCS from time to time. But Plague Doctor is all over Fegan's butt. Here comes another 120. That looks like a really good shot. Gets bent around the hill. And that one hits Fegan. And Fegan, unfortunately, this time, already in a weakened state, loses his wings. And those are important to fly, Billy. Those, uh, Indeed. you kind of need those. And, yep, you turn it, you turn into a big old lawn dart at that point. Uh, well, a, a lawn dart that doesn't fly very well. Usually you think of a dart that flies decently well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's but that was like a lawn dart that they forgot to put the pins on, the fins on, and yeah. Deathly now, we can see, and he's got a Phoenix coming in on him from his left side, and that's not going to get line of sight. It's going to reappear over his left side, and his Rage going to get three kills? No, they get notched. Ooh, and nice. the AIM-7... The AIM is there. worthless and now we've got a Ooh, chewy goes down aim nine hits him and now we've got another aim seven is this gonna be the aim seven no it's not no, <laughs> no it's not oh it is it's just what? or was what? that an aim nine i don't know what that is something hap something hit him that was launched i think it may have been an aim nine but something hit him and he goes down so it's still way off at the distance <laughs> <laughs> it it got shot. If Task Force tried and says an aim nine hit him. Okay. I thought they were out of juice by the time they, they went through. I thought we got lucky and saw an aim seven do something, but uh we did no. not. We definitely did not. Used to. 
You make, hashtag make game sevens great again. These ED, please. Thank you very much. Hashtag well, I don't think they were ever really great, but uh, they need to be better than they are now. <laughs> Fair. I mean, yeah, no, definitely not great, but at least working. Because they're kind of worthless as they <laughs> as they sit. But so is the R27. Not the ER, but the R27R. It is worthless. Yeah. They yeah. both they both need some love. Um, they, they both need some love. I think the biggest issue with them, and I think this is what plagues all the semi-active missiles right now, is I'm pretty sure there is a bug where if you fly through the notch, the missile is trashed. Like, not even may have to maintain the notch. It's just like if you fly through it, the missile's done. And I think that's the biggest thing that's happening to the semi-active missiles and why they're yeah. they're having such a such a problem. Yeah, that, that is definitely part of that. I think you're right. Doom Sniper asks, are planes outside the bubble technically worth more because they have freedom of movement to move into it whenever they want? I mean, yes. However, um, there is kind of a king of the hill style thing going on. So if all of your teammates die in the bubble, and a lot of times the bubbles are big enough where if somebody goes and sits at the center of the bubble, you're not going to be able to reach them very well. Um, so there's a king of the hill style thing where if only one team is in the bubble for five minutes, they win. They control it and they win. They just have to RTB at that point. You lose. So there are things that st stop that or try and prevent that from happening. Um, but, yeah, you can shoot from outside the bubble into the bubble. That is a viable strategy. But if you don't control the bubble um, or if you go into it and then leave it, you're going to have a bad time. And, and I think it's important for us as, as, you know, kind of the people organizing it to incentivize closing distance mm -hmm. um as much as we all enjoy the super long pbr stuff blah, blah blah i think you know this stuff really gets to be its most entertaining and it's uh most enjoyable mm -hmm. as those User distances really kind channel. of close in so i think you know creating ways to draw people in to to to, to actually fight and avoid just mm -hmm. trying to stay winning mm -hmm. it from like say outside the bubble or something along the lines of that whatever the strategy might be there i just i think that it's better off for the whole sport esport in general to kind of push in the direction of yeah the clothes, clothes yeah out there. and it uh what was i gonna say user left your channel i don't know what i was gonna say but that match ended up ended both rounds ended up with everybody getting pretty close i was pretty happy with that um that was a really exciting match from both rounds i mean Attack Force Trident was very dominant in round two, but it was still really exciting to watch. Really yeah. exciting to watch. So, well flown by both teams. What do you think, Billy, that... I think Phoenix Task Force's downfall in round two was obviously the Tomcat. Uh, Doom Sniper asked, your rules... Allows rearm and refueling if you ever enter the bubble. If you never, no, you're not allowed to rearm and refuel. Yeah, no, that's, no. I don't think that's why. No. So there's, on some of the maps, there is a tanker that sits outside the bubble, but you're not allowed to, you know, take off and then go back to base. You're Once you're in the air, you're in the air. And if you land, you're done. Some of the maps have tankers, but... I don't think we've seen a map yet with a tanker. None of them and, have been long frankly, enough. I, I, you know, I've watched enough people on public servers tank to know that, you know, just because somebody's won the match and needs to go tank and get fuel and get home doesn't mean they're going to get home and make it right. Like that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's a challenge for a lot of people. I think, uh, you know, none, none his name or where's Lazi, but nevertheless, for us mortals out there, tanking is a, can mm -hmm. be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, frankly, it would be. I think it would be entertaining to see somebody have to come back and then, you know, not that it's happening live, but tank knowing that everyone's going to be watching you tank is <laughs> probably going to creep into your head there at some point. Ooh. Well, Chewy tried to land on a road, and that didn't end very well. I'm going to assume he ran out of fuel. Yeah. I, I was wondering what he was doing back there, and I flipped to his camera, and he was on the ground going into a skid, and then his plane flipped over. So that's one person that ran out of fuel. But I don't think we're going to have any problems with any of the other aircraft making it back. The, the F-16. Oh, Chewie got hit. Oh, he did. I saw that happen. 
Um, uh, so he was remember, yeah, when he was when he was merged with the Phoenix Task Force pilot, Deathly hit Chewie, and I thought I saw some smoke come off of him, but then I checked him later. I thought and didn't see anything, but I guess his his engines finally gave out and he went he down. I got tired of that compressor saw banging the whole way back. I know that's about as annoying as it can get when you're driving a busted cat back and the compressor stall is just whacking. It feels like somebody's just taking a bat and just whacking the side of the thing the whole time you're flying. Mm. It's better than left engine, fire, left engine, <laughs> fire, left engine, fire. God, I know it's on fire. <laughs> I was flying the A-10 and I got hit by some... some uh, ground fire and I looked up and all three of the fire handles were lit and I was like this is a bad day <laughs> well in the like, A-10 with in the A-10 most of the time you'll get hit by some golden 762 or 556 <laughs> round and you'll lose an engine it's like what? you got some master Canadian sniper sitting down there <laughs> yeah. I looked at the three handles and I was like I can deal with this but I don't feel like it right now I'm just going to Hmm. I think the biggest downfall for Phoenix Task Force there was Rage and the Tomcat. Rage just dominated, dominated the Phoenix Task Force side. I mean, he had two kills, three kills with the two kills with the Phoenix. Yep. One from like 60 miles. And I really think that that came down to them being so low and the missile coming down from so high, they were outside of, um, uh, from outside the RWR range. Sorry. Stahl says rage in his Rio. I just say rage because I don't know who is, who is Rio is. So I just, I just say the pilot, pilot name. Rios are the unsung heroes. They are. DCS. It, it, you go on the public servers and we got Jazzy, who's basically, you know, all, a majority of what he does is Rioing. And, uh, you know, he never gets a kill associated to his name in the chat, but he's a part of so many of them. And it's like, it's really like, I wish ED would create an extra stat on that scoreboard, an extra column for Rio kills, because it's important. Those guys deserve getting credit in the grand scheme of things for taking part in downing an aircraft. So I don't know if, I don't know if it's just giving them a kill as well or creating an extra column in that scoreboard. But I think along the, you know, at some point, Billy, I, don't, should be addressed. I don't think that's ever going to happen because look at the gazelle, oh, no, no, the gazelle, no. you kill it and nothing happens. It just well, vaporizes yeah, and poly, disappears. That's more of a poly chop thing than an ED thing at the end of the day. Yeah. But you would think that, uh, that, there would be some type of standard, right? That there would be some type of, you got to get this fixed in order for it to be, to be plausible. And I guess stall on a change of subject was rages Rio and they had three kills in this round. So rage, did you launch the aim nine? Was that your aim nine that took down deathly? I'm going to assume it was your aim. Aim sevens were garbage. I don't think that was you, your fault. I think that was the aim seven. Yep. Okay. So that was your aim nine. Your Phoenix could have killed him a lot earlier, but he got really lucky with that that uh, line of sight that ended up happening. I guess these guys have enough fuel to be able to make it back, really, without too much of a problem, considering they're flying echelon. Hold on, Doom Snapper with uh, one more DCS Satal legal question up there. I also need one final rule lawyering. If a team loses and the RTB is requested... Players exiting the bubble will not be allowed to fire upon players that never entered the bubble. This is like once once that thing shows up and you've won, the round's over. Everybody has to RTB. If that's what you're getting at. So wait, but if it's if a player, so yeah, so he's saying like. I guess he's saying like the timer expired. That player did. So I ever think enter the I bubble. think what he's saying is if. If one team gets into the bubble, right, and they control it for five minutes and it says they've controlled it, RTB, and then the other team never entered it and is now waiting for them to have to RTB, and then they kill all of them before they go home, what would happen? Well, the round is over. Like, you, you <laughs> both teams have to RTB once somebody wins in that fashion. I have never seen somebody win in that fashion. Um, it's just there to stop people from not getting Doing in the bubble. Yeah. <laughs> 
that would kind of defeat a little bit of the purpose here. You could just do that. Yeah, that and I don't think very many people want to do that anyway. Yeah. Uh, it defeats the whole purpose of squadron on squadron warfare. So, yeah. You guys are confusing me. <laughs> that would make my head hurt. I felt like I was reading like Charlie from It's Always Sunny Philadelphia. Yeah, Tom I'm getting I'm there. getting like, confused. Like, what? I'm getting a little confused. It, it, it took a second to get there. So these guys should almost be home. Couple things to talk about real quick. They are almost home. One, Splash One Gaming Discord is now an official Discord community. So that's a a big deal, though I have no idea quite what that means. I still got to read through everything, but we are an official recognized Discord community. Um, I think it's because of esports, so there's that. We got that going on for us. Um, what else? The video that was just launched by ED for the Hind and the Syria yes. map. Yeah, yes. Wags was flying in the Hind. I have not been able to watch that. Billy, don't spoil it for anybody, but was it good? It was very good. Uh, you're going to see some texture weird weird things. Uh, pay attention to some of the gauges, not just not operating at all with inside the hind. So definitely looks like there's still a lot of work left uh, to go as far as getting that thing all jived up. But everything looking pretty from a texture uh, mm -hmm. modeling uh, base like, or point of view, I guess you could say. And I think that Syria map, I mean, I've been saying for a bit now, 2020 year, the, the helicopter and DCS. And I, I really think, you know, we were saying earlier, obviously it's the newest map. It's going to probably be the best, prettiest map in DCS, but I think it's going to be the best suited for helicopter operations. Uh, one of the guys in our group, uh, Flint, he brought up, you know, you could take a city like Damascus and probably set up an entire helicopter server just based around a flight over at Damascus with how deep and dense that city is. Um, so I just think it's going to be a map that offers a lot of different opportunities and things to do. Uh, I, I think the landscape, I'm so ready for a change of scenery in DCS. It's not even funny. I think, what are we at? We're, we're just under three or two and a half years with now two years with that Persian Gulf map, mm -hmm. I think, right? Or right in mm -hmm. and around that. Uh, but I'm just so ready for, for some new scenery. Well, Persian Gulf is cool because it, I think it gave us a change. It was such a huge drastic change from what, uh, the Caucasus did, but it doesn't really have enough going on on it to make it interesting over a lot of the map. It's just bland landscape for the majority of the area. So I'm really excited for the for the Syria because it's I don't know that I'll ever get bored of it. Really, it's it's there's so much on it. It's so dense. And let's be frank, the trees look way better. And Navy Doc, I don't know if you watched that whole interview, but did they bring up the dynamic campaign at all in that? Because I was really hoping to see that question get brought up with the whole thing. And I, and to the point you're making about the Syrian map not being ready until September, October, I'm starting to get the feeling we're going to see the hind in the Syria map, maybe coupled together on a release date type deal. Maybe, maybe not. I know they did that with the 14 and the, and the or the, I'm sorry, the Hornet and the Persian Gulf map. So maybe, maybe something similar there, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure yet. Gordo B drops another gifted sub. He's got 134 so far. Dude. <laughs> I'm going to have to name this channel after you. I know, right? If we ever have another kid, I'm going to have to name him Gordo. I'm never having another kid. That, so just yeah, that won't happen. But still, <laughs> if I did, I'd have to name him Gordo. Maybe if we get another dog. Hey, there in, you go. In tribute. I've got three already. I don't know that my wife would let me have another one. Don't do that to the kid. <laughs> Rage on finals coming out of the break here at Maycop. If he's able to successfully land this, that'll signal the end of the round and the end of the match with Task Force Trident going up two to nil. He's pretty yeah, he's right. banking pretty steep here coming on to finals. And he's pretty slow. But I think the Tomcat handles pretty well at low speed, so I'm not hugely worried about it. And G.I. Joe, a DCS world Ooh. map is about as far away as uh, could possibly <laughs> could, could possibly be unless there's some significant changes to the way they do things. The thing with 2020, man, is they, they benefit from that cloud computing in, 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 in a lot of different ways. The, you know, that infrastructure yeah. is something that ED is just so far from being able to have. It's 
it's not even funny now if companies like microsoft make that those type of setups available to third parties to utilize for their own stuff you know that 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 could be a game changer at the end of the day you know i could see uh ed getting access to use you know azure in that in that mm -hmm. capacity and platform after microsoft's kind of you know put it put it into that uh that that, that area of business mm -hmm. where they're where they're marketing mm -hmm. it out you could see something like that maybe happen but i think it the the tech required to get to that point is just so well beyond anything ed can do right now i mean they can they can barely get what they have working right let alone mm -hmm. do something like that so mm -hmm. very true very true well rage is able to put it down with stall as his wingman or his rio so they go up two to nil and win the match over phoenix task force well flown by both teams and guys i have to head out i the reason i have to go <laughs> is because i gotta ship something the post office closes in 20 minutes so i have to go ship this on an eBay sale, but uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. I'm going to fix TacView real-time telemetry. I'm going to look at what the hell is going on with the audio for DCS. I have no idea what's going on there, but I'm going to fix that, and we will uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. Who flies Tuesday? Let's see. Uh, baby shakers and Who flies Tuesday? Oh, it's Baby Shakers in German Air Tactical Group, I think. Where are we? Here? Yeah. Baby Shakers in German Tactical Air Group. So I think that's going to be a good one, too. Uh, I, well, they're all good, but I, I think we've got a big stretch of longer matches coming up. So if you guys want to see the schedule and don't care about knowing who's wins, winning, you guys can go to splashonegamingcom slash Satel and check out the schedule. Right now, the match we are on took place June 11th. Or sorry, July 11th, so it ha happened a couple weeks ago. And we just go in chronological order. Uh, Diamond League should be starting back up here soon, so we will be sprinkling in Diamond League uh, in the next couple weeks and getting that started. But until next time, guys, be watching for that super cut to drop from Alpha Whiskey on the YouTube channel. Um, I also post all of our replays. If you're a Patreon member, you get the replays a week early. Uh, so if that interests you guys at all, be sure to check that out as well. Um, and we're... Uh, Billy, I don't have time for a shirt giveaway, so is it okay with you if we do that Tuesday? Yeah, that's totally cool. Okay, so we're going to do the shirt giveaway on Tuesday because I don't have time to do it right now. i got to go pack something. Um, but, guys, it's been a pleasure. I'm glad we got the webcams working, uh, even though you can't see my face right now and you just see Maycop Runway. But things are starting to come together. Now I just got to get OBS to stop taking a dump and the sound to stop freaking out. But... Oh, I applied for partnership for Twitch. So hopefully that goes through. We're going to have to Fingers see. Crossed, everybody. The thing Fingers they crossed. said last year when I applied was I needed to stream more since we were only streaming on Saturdays. But we're streaming three days a week now for two to three hours. So I think we got it. I mean, we're nice. averaging about 150 people. So I think I think we should get it. I don't exactly know what it's going to do for me when, for us when we get it. But we'll have to see. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got. I'm going to send you out with the... Supercut from Alpha Whiskey for this match. And until next time, Tuesday, 1500 Zulu, Baby Shakers taking on German Tactical Air Group. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time. See you.